The movie opens up with a pre-med student, Paige Morgan, who receives a birthday cake from her teachers and colleagues. Amidst the celebrations, she suddenly realizes that she's late for something, so she hurries out of the school and drives home. As she goes to her room, she ignores her mother, grabs a dress from a closet, and hops in her truck. Meanwhile, in Denmark, the young and rebellious Prince Edvard and his assistant Soren meet up with their friends. The prince then challenges one of them to a race. Simultaneously, back in America, Paige is driving to a friend's wedding. She arrives in her father's pickup and nearly runs over half of the wedding party. At the reception, she and a friend discuss the subject of romance and marriage. However, she has time for neither because of her focus on her career. Soon afterwards, the bridal bouquet is tossed, and by some twist of fate, it lands right in the lap of our heroine. Back in Denmark, the race begins after the streets are cleared by traffic policemen. The two cars speed down the open road, and Prince Edvard in his black BMW is closely followed by his friend in a golden BMW. Just as the two competitors approach the finish line, the driver of the golden BMW lifts his foot off the accelerator, allowing the prince to clinch the victory. Edvard realizes this but doesn't complain when he's greeted with kisses from two young girls. Suddenly, he realizes that he's late for something very important. At the royal castle, 12-year-old Princess Arabella plays with a Game Boy as King Harold and Queen Rosalind of Denmark wait anxiously for their eldest child to arrive. Right before they appear out in public, Edvard arrives and he's greeted with a hug by Arabella. However, his parents don't seem so happy with his carelessness. Edvard then takes his sister's arm and they step out onto the balcony. After the public appearance, Edvard and his father are to meet with some members of the government for an important discussion. Harold warns his son to behave himself and the young prince grumpily agrees. As they enter the room, the king gets a bit dizzy and almost stumbles down to the floor. But when asked if he's alright, he insists that he is fine, and the meeting goes on. Edvard couldn't care less about business and politics, and he intentionally flirts with one of the women present in the meeting. Soon afterwards, the prince and his assistant decide to leave. He does a bit of fencing to release his stress and starts watching an American show about college girls from Wisconsin doing wild things in public. Following this, he tells his parents that he wants to go to Wisconsin for further studies. The king and the queen are disgusted by his recent behavior, and they chastise him for the same. However, Edvard blames his mother for keeping him on a tight leash and announces that he will go to Wisconsin without his parents' help. After he storms out, Harold agrees that his son should go off, pointing out that it's an encouraging sign that he wants to fix his life. The queen then asks Soren to accompany him and save her son from any possible harm. In the meantime, Paige is at a bar with her friends. They discuss their careers, and she mentions how she's failing miserably at classical English literature. Getting good marks on Shakespeare will help elevate her overall grades, which ultimately is a must to get into medical school. Later in the day, Paige is crossing the street when she is nearly run over by Edvard's limo. Unable to get a good glimpse, she ignores him and continues walking on her way. On the other hand, Edvard can see her clearly, and he is instantly smitten by her. Soren is not pleased with the college life that Edvard desires, but the prince orders him to enjoy himself. He also asks his assistant to call him Eddie instead. Next, they get up to their dorm room, which is not exactly clean and rather small. Soon, their roommate, a heavyweight Xbox geek named Steven, comes in and tells them to keep their hands off his stuff. Later that night, the two Danish men go to the bar, where they meet Paige, who works there as a bartender. When Edvard asks her for the menu, she teases the prince for his posh accent and informs him that the kitchen has closed. After a few beers, he musters up the courage to talk to Paige. He introduces himself as Eddie and tries to flirt with her. When the bartender doesn't catch his European references, the prince moves on to a better topic. He asks her to take her shirt off like the show Wild College Girls that he saw back in Denmark. He doesn't realize the TV show is scripted, and his stupidity angers Paige. Without hesitation, she pours water on him and orders the bouncers to escort him out of the bar. 
The following day, Eddie arrives late for his first chemistry class. The professor then asks him to sit beside Paige. He further reveals that the pupils sitting next to each other will be permanent lab partners until the end of the semester. After class, Paige tells Eddie that she must do well in chemistry to get into medical school. She then asks her new lab partner not to mess up. As Paige walks away, Eddie apologizes for his actions from last night by randomly quoting Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. However, she scoffs and warns him not to forget his lab supplies. However, their partnership starts on the wrong foot as Eddie misses his first chemistry practicals. Left completely on her own, Paige's setup explodes, which makes her look incompetent in the eyes of her professor. After the class, she storms into Eddie's dorm room and lashes out. She calls him entitled and a rich, spoiled kid. When he refuses to drop out of the class, she begs him to show up the next time and leaves. A few days later, Paige discovers that her grade in the Shakespeare class is a bit below average, which is simply not enough to get into medical school. Later in the chemistry lab, she remembers that Eddie quoted Shakespeare and asks for his help. He agrees, on the condition that she will help him with laundry. When Paige gets her next English grades, she is ecstatic to receive an A on her Shakespeare paper. She then goes to thank Eddie, who is repairing an oil fixture. After they apologize to each other, they accidentally spill oil all over the floor. Elsewhere, Paige's friend says she wants to ask Eddie to come home with her for Thanksgiving, but Paige beats her to it and asks the prince first, who readily accepts the offer. On the other hand, Soren is scared to be left alone in the dorm room, but the prince reassures him that he will be fine. Following this, Eddie is dragged to a Wisconsin country farm where he meets Paige's parents and two younger brothers. She takes him to a room where he sees a giant map and inquires about it. Paige replies that the places marked with red pins are where she wants to visit someday. At lunch, the two brothers pick on Eddie about how there aren't any good people from Denmark. Eddie names people like Kierkegaard, Niles Bohr, and Hans Christian Andersen. This doesn't impress them at all, but when the prince reveals that Lars Ulrich from Metallica is from Denmark as well, they are enthralled. Slowly, he begins to win over the entire family. The dad, Mr. Morgan, says he needs help with some of the farm chores, and the prince gladly volunteers. Little does he know that farm chores are not easy. By the end of the day, Eddie is both tired and bored, until he spots the lawnmowers. He finds out that Paige's brothers participate in a race with the lawnmowers every year. The big races are coming up, and they agree to let Eddie take their place in it. At the race, Mrs. Morgan notices that her daughter's behavior changes around her new friend. Meanwhile, the race starts, and all is going well until an arch-rival of the two brothers gets angry. He tries to push Eddie off the road, but fails and goes off instead. Finally, the prince wins the race and is congratulated by the boys, but when he tries to make peace with their rival, he ends up in a fistfight. Back at the barn, Paige cleans Eddie up while he brags about their relationship. She tells him that they don't have a relationship, but they end up sharing a long kiss. When they go back to the university, Eddie and Paige begin making out in the back of the library. Seemingly out of nowhere, they are discovered by the paparazzi from Denmark, who immediately start snapping pictures of the young prince. Still recovering from the shock of the moment, Paige asks Eddie what is going on and why they were calling him Prince Edvard. When Eddie explains that he's the Prince of Denmark, she is upset at the deception. Eddie tries to convince her that his feelings for her are genuine, but she walks away in tears. By the next morning, the royal couple in Denmark get to know of their son's shenanigans. This makes them very upset, as Edvard's face is all over the tabloids, along with a girl. Later in the week, Soren and Edvard have to fight past photographers to get into the chemistry classroom. The prince is dismayed to find that Paige is no longer his chemistry partner, and that she is still angry with him. After a long day, Soren receives a phone call and recognizes Queen Rosalind's voice. He hands the phone to Edvard, who can hear strong concern in his mother's voice as she tells him he must return home because his father is ill. Although Edvard is not too fond of his mother, 
He's very concerned for his father and rushes back to Denmark. Meanwhile, as Paige is giving a speech in her Shakespeare class, she realizes that, like Romeo and Juliet, she and Edvard were meant to be together. So she goes up to his dorm, where she learns that the two Danish men left in the morning. She also finds a note left by Edvard, where he has explained his entire situation. Worried for him, Claire decides to fly all the way to Denmark. Once she reaches there, she takes a cab ride around the capital. She's excited to see the historical landmarks the cab driver points out, but is more concerned with finding Edvard. After a while, they discover that the royal family is out in public moving through the city, but due to traffic, it's difficult to get through. Paige jumps out of the cab, and after a bit of searching, she finds Edvard riding alongside his family's carriage. She tries to call out to him, but he can't hear her. However, when the people of Denmark recognize the American girl and start shouting her name, Edvard turns and sees her. He parades his horse to the spot, helps her up, and they ride off towards the castle together. This obviously doesn't please his parents at all. In the next scene, the duo arrives at the castle, where Soren greets them. While Soren is touring the place, the queen expresses that her son has betrayed his country by being seen with the common girl. Edvard tells his mother that he will still accept the crown on the condition that he be allowed to marry Paige. The queen vehemently refuses this, but out of nowhere, the king shows up and agrees. He shockingly gives his son permission to marry Paige. Later, Edvard finds his lover with Soren out on a tour of the gardens. He shoos his assistant away and takes the opportunity to propose to Paige, who almost instantly accepts it. The next morning, Paige wakes up and receives a warm embrace from her future sister-in-law, Arabella. When Soren comes in, he tells the soon-to-be princess about her schedule, and she finally realizes that she's about to become royalty. Next, a small montage ensues, showing Paige meeting in public places with Rosalind and Edvard and getting her dress prepared for the ball. At a local hospital, the paparazzi are curious as to where the soon-to-be princess is. They find her playing with sick children in the playroom, where she poses with them for a picture. However, the queen is less than amused and tells her how dangerous this could be to her reputation. In the meantime, Soren and Paige leave the queen to search for Edvard. They find him sitting beside his dad, and Soren whispers that it's time for him to leave for a meeting. The prince thanks him and kisses his father's forehead before leaving. At the meeting, Edvard points out to the board members that he's learned a thing or two about negotiation. He further adds that the new Denmark will be about negotiations. On the other hand, Paige is summoned by the queen for a private conversation. The latter mentions that she has always stayed close to tradition, but maybe now is time for a change. She leads Paige down into the basement, where all her jewels are stored. She then lets the common girl pick whatever she wants. Later that week, during the ball, Edvard asks Paige to dance. It takes her a few minutes to realize that the song being played is actually the one they heard on the jukebox back in Wisconsin. They dance for a while, then go off to study. After only a few minutes of privacy, Soren comes to tell Edward that the Prime Minister is here to see him. The prince sighs and tells his wife-to-be that he will come back with a surprise. But as soon as he leaves, she notices a globe which reminds her of all the places she wanted to see before she fell in love. When Edvard returns to the room, she abruptly tells him that she can't be the queen. She explains that she can't give up her dreams and stop being herself. Edvard knows that he cannot change her mind no matter what, so he hugs her and bids her goodbye. After this, she takes a flight and heads back to Wisconsin. Several days later, Edvard is crowned the new king of Denmark, and he gives an inspiring speech in front of the crowd. His parents are finally proud to see that he has grown into a responsible man. The movie then cuts to several years later, and it is Paige's graduation day. As she celebrates with her family and friends, she hears someone recite her favorite Shakespeare quote. To her delight, it is none other than Edvard. The two then reconcile, and he mentions that he's ready to wait for her until she finishes her education. Claire warns him that Denmark is not ready for a queen like her, to which he replies that they will have to be.